Hi there and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm starting a new project. I am going to be building a little dollhouse from scratch. So I'm going to make it four rooms, um, a kitchen, a living room, a bathroom and a bedroom. Um, I'm going to be using mostly supplies from the dollar store. So if you want to make one yourself, it's fairly accessible. I have these craft boards. There's six of them, four dollars, really good price. I have these dowels. Um, two dollars for a bunch of different shapes and thicknesses. I like these because I'm going to be using cardboard for my walls which I get off cereal boxes and while they're good this does give some extra strength and because today I'm going to be stacking two rooms on top of two rooms I want to make sure it doesn't fall down on me because that would be unfortunate. So um, decorating. I'm going to be using these papers. It's 24 in a pack for four dollars. In previous rooms I've used sort of these gold look um, I might still use the, there's a sort of mermaid look down here for the bathroom because that's super sweet, um, but the, I'm going to maybe use some of these other colors for my other rooms. I do also have some solid colors, um, both in fall colors and more summer colors. Um, I'm definitely going to use that for one room, maybe the bedroom, because I got these little wooden flower embellishments. Um, and I thought it would be really cute on the bedroom to like have a little tier of them, kind of like people do in their own room. They came in this cute little tray, but I'm going to put it on the living, no, bedroom wall to give it um, a little bookshelf look. I thought that would be cute. And then I also have this bigger one, which I'm going to take little parts out and use it as a built-in bookshelf for the living room. I thought that would just work super good. Along with the living room, I have this little press out kit. It's a couch, two chairs, and two little a side table and a coffee table. They are just, you press out the pieces, it comes with a little paper that guides you, and you put them together. Um, these ones I usually leave plain, but this time I might um, paint them two coats of like brown or whatever color I like to give a kind of stained look. Um, previously I've left them sort of plain because if I do a busy wallpaper and a pretty flooring and then a bunch of decor I don't want it to get overwhelmed especially if I'm going to add um, little cushions and I don't want it to be too busy and sometimes by that point I'm too tired so we'll see if I color them or not. I've said a couple times I'm going to color them and then I don't but we'll see. And then I also have a bathroom set here. Same idea press them out put them together. It's a vanity toilet and tub. I also have this little set and I don't need the table and chairs because I do have a different kitchen set, but I thought this little back cupboard here would look really cute either um, in the living room if I need more furniture or even in the kitchen. So there's that. Then this little set here has a cradle and a high chair and a toddler bed. I think I'll probably just use the cradle. I have furniture to make an adult room and then I thought I'd put the cradle in for a little baby accessory. Not that babies are accessories, but you know what I mean. And then I also have this set that is $4, those other ones were two, um, because it comes with more furniture and it's just a different design. But this is going to be for the kitchen. I've made it before, it's fairly easy to put together, except for that back thing. Um, it's like a um, where you store all your dishes and stuff. The word is escaping me today. But it can be a bit of a pain to put together, but I'll probably use that as well. The other cute little thing I had, I had built um, a different kit dollhouse before and I had this little fireplace. So if it looks cute, we'll be adding that to there. Um, I do have a couple more like individual pieces and I'll just see as we go if there are pieces I need. So it's extra or nice to have some extra pieces along the side. I also have this for flooring, which might look good in the bedroom and the living room maybe. And then I also have this flooring. It's a stick on, works really well. And I got this this time. Um, it kind of reminds me of bathroom tile. So if it doesn't look too busy, that might look cute as bathroom tile. So we'll see if we do the stick on or the bathroom tile. Um, then I also have a whole bunch of cardboard boxes that I'm gonna use for walls. And now I'm ready to get started. So if you wanna see how this turns out, come along. All right, so I have my flooring and my bottom board ready to go and I have my walls cut out. I have a side wall, another side wall, a back wall that I've already attached some cream paper to and a window cut out and then I've decided on this paper here for my walls and I am doing a living room so let's see if I can get this flooring done first. So usually I want to line up to see where I'm going to fit it in here. 
which way goes better. Let's see. I think that's going to work better. It will hang over the edge a little bit, but I am going to use a little exacto knife trimmer, so that is okay. Of course, I have to find it. It's right here. I use this little guy. So I find if I peel it from the back, um, of course I have to get it started. It works better, and then I just flip it around. So I usually peel right here, and I just fold it a little bit so I have a good working surface. And then I feel like this edge is a little nicer, so I'm just going to line it up with the corner, and line it up there. And I like to do it this way, that way I get the least amount of bubbles. And then I just pull from the back and smooth it down. You could use like a credit card or a little piece of paper, but I don't find I need it if I'm doing it this way. So I'm just gonna slowly pull it down. Well, like so. And just smooth it out. And now you'll see that it does overlap. I'm just gonna flip it over. And I can see here, there's an edge here and here. So I'm just gonna take my Handy dandy exacto knife. I am left handed and this thing of course is made for right handed people so we're going to adapt and sort of flip it around and hold it technically the wrong way but it does the job. So I'm just going to slice along there and it just comes off and it's easier to make it a little bit longer um, versus too short and then you're like fussing with it and feeling frustrated. So I just, I do try measure it exactly so I'm not wasting but generally speaking if it's a smidge over I would prefer that. And if it doesn't come off on the first go around, instead of yanking on it, I will just do another pass. Sometimes it's just like holding on on an edge and then peel it off. Toss that in the trash. And then I'm just gonna check the other sides. There's only one more edge that has this top edge here. I think has a tiny bit more. And it is hard. The closer you get to it being done, the more likelihood you'll have to like sort of fuss with the front a bit. So if I have just a tiny smidge and it doesn't want to pull off nicely, sometimes I just like wipe it on the side edge like that. And then it's, you're not risking ripping at it. And I am going to use hot glue on the sides. So, but that is my flooring. Super nice. Looks nice for a lid control. So I do have this little thing above here that can hold your glue gun. I just got it from, I'm pretty sure it was a dollar short. It was a couple years ago but it allows you to rest your glue gun holder without it getting hot and all weird. So um, next we are going to let that heat up for a minute and I do have more glue gun sticks. So next is these wallpapers here. I'm just gonna move this flooring off to the edge for a second. I already did this back wall. Um, I cut in a window, one second here. Sorry. I cut in a window um, and I did have to make it a little bit bigger than the cardboard because there's the two side walls actually attached to the back of here so it didn't need to be as big. All right. So I'm going to set that aside as well. So our next wall is going to go like so. Just seeing that it fits properly before I, yeah. Sometimes I cut it like exactly, so I'm just seeing which side it fits on better. That side, I think. Then I also got this sort of double-sided tape. It is really finicky though. I will admit I bought it from the dollar store, so maybe that is my own fault. But I find, I bought two of them, which is fortunate because the one I sort of accidentally did something not fantastic to when I was learning how to use it because it had a little bit of trial and error but you sort of have to hold it super flat it's like glue almost instead of tape and you have to press it and if you rip it up too fast it does sort of pull the lining kind of like a tape but as far as I can tell there's not a way to fix the other one so I'm glad I bought you but we'll see if this is as handy as I would like it to be if not I might just have to go back to the hot glue that I was previously doing, but I hoped this would be a little bit smoother. Okay, so I've put enough tape on there.
if we can attach this. Okay, sorry, it's hard for you to see. I'll see if I can do it this way. So you can see, I'm gonna attach this back edge first. Let's see, so I'm just gonna put some hot glue. This is what I usually do. I just put a line, not too thick, of hot glue along the bottom of the wall. And then I line it up with the back. The trick is if you're not quick enough, it can, if there's too much glue, get attached to your table, which honestly, then you just pull it off. But it is a pain. So I'm just trying to correct that by lifting it almost soon as I glue it to keep it from doing that. All right, wall number one attached. It is annoying that like you sort of have to, let's see. I am gonna stick this little doodad right there just to hold it in place so it doesn't flop on me and immediately cause a problem. Then this is gonna be attached right here. So it's kind of a combination of the same one. I'm gonna do an edge here. And of course, knowing me, I will probably run out and need a new glue stick on there, but that's okay. All right, a little bit more up here. Okay, now I'm just gonna spin this a second. And I'm just gonna line this up right here. And I am gonna try to do the same trick where I lift, it. oh, that was not ideal. Lift it while I do this, just because I'm not a fan of it sticking to the table. Do you think I have to do that back edge again? It didn't stick as well because it already sort of flopped over, but let me add some glue to that. It does get more stable as I add this back piece, which is why I stuck it on there. One second here, let's pull that off. Okay, that one side, how that turned out. One second. So you can see I've attached it at the bottom there. You can see that I've, let me show you. Folded the edge over here and applied the glue here. And then I'm gonna do the same for the other side where I'm gonna add a line of glue down here and then this back piece is gonna get glue and then it's gonna have a completed room. So I'm gonna take this other wall here and it is gonna go this way and be applied like so. So, well, let me see if I can show you that. I just need to put a line of glue down. can see it so there I just that's why I made those extra flaps I'm just gonna press those in and then you can see I have all my walls attached and then the room is gonna look like this so that is our progress today oh I can see this edge needs a little bit more glue let's do that a moment just gonna, that's better okay so <laughs> Trying to show you the right angle. Okay, it will. You can see the walls are nice, but need some extra stability. So before I put the second floor on, I will take those wooden dowels I showed you in the beginning and probably put like one on each side and probably one along the back edge just to give it some extra. I'm gonna put the room. Oops. I'm gonna move this out of the way so it is not blocking the view. Okay, we're gonna put the room just out of sight here so that I can show you the furniture. Okay, let's move the hot glue in. So because this is the living room, we are going to make the furniture next. Okay. Um, need my scissors. Just gonna pop this open and show you what the pieces look like. Lay that in there. Don't need these, but I usually save them for my toddler who is three. He uses them under supervision so he doesn't cover something he shouldn't in them. So it just comes with this little piece of paper. It does tell you which are which. It just says, please use sandpaper to smooth the rough edges, but uh, I never do that. Okay, so press out pieces. Um, I will show you. So this is the table. This is legs of the table. This is a, um, a door for the shelf. Another piece. Another piece of the shelf. Pretty sure that's what that is too. Oh, the back of a chair. Sometimes these little things here I save.
for different things that I need, but honestly, I don't need to. So that's the back of the chair. Uh, this is the seat of the chair, and you literally just pop them out. And then sometimes I use a pen if they're really determined, like the little tiny piece here that you need to pop out. But honestly, you just push it a little bit and it does the same thing. So they're really not that hard. You do want to be careful that you're not like actually breaking the piece because then, I mean, you could use hot glue, but then you're screwed a little bit. And then the table has the same little, sometimes if these are stubborn, that's where I push the tip of the pen through just to make it a little bit easier. But I'll show you how simple this table is. So you're just going to take these two pieces and slide them in together. Then you're going to take the table top and just finick it and you can if you feel like it's unstable add glue but honestly ta-da table see so um i don't think i'll need it because i have a different set for the kitchen but i would just want to show you um i need this piece to come out too this is part of that little shelf i wanted that i'm pretty sure will look really cute in the living room i just wanted to see um this is a chair piece Let's move it up. So I have all the tables and chairs. Let's see this cabinet piece. And I have made this one before, so I usually just, one second here, eyeball it. One second here, just popping out these pieces. Some, some of these get stuck. Ta-da! Press out boards, and then if I were to open it, which I can, then there's like a little shelf in there. So, okay, that ideally is gonna go in there. I just haven't decided to wear yet. And the other pieces I'm gonna set aside. Like I said, don't need the table and chairs. Then I have this little set. Okay, so I'm gonna put the table, coffee table, and whatnot together. Put this back in here. Again with a little do my hickeys. And I do often keep the sandpaper, but like you don't need to. Rarely. Except for with that hutch that I couldn't find the word for earlier. Um sometimes that is just I don't know. I even sometimes do it, I cut off pieces that aren't cooperative because it's two dollars from the dollar store. It's not the end of the world.
You can see it. Um, I haven't really decided which configuration. It clearly doesn't need to go. Ooh, we're going to have to fix that. I think this little piece, this little shelf I showed you in the beginning, is going to need some glue because usually, like I showed you with the other furniture, it does not fall apart that quickly. some hot glue it is more cooperative perfect no cooperative increasingly okay so why don't we put the couch over here and maybe the coffee table in front and I don't know what it'll look better on an angle it's a relative term right okay um honestly sometimes it takes me like sticking things in different positions several times to be like, yeah, so bear with me a moment. Um, ooh, maybe that. Hold on, there's that shelf. Ooh, still hot. Hold on. One second. Okay. What do we think? Does that look... Let me turn it so I can see. That is the configuration that I like. So, couch in the corner, coffee table, two little lounge chairs with a little other table and then this lovely little chest what i'm wondering is if that shelf that i showed you earlier this shelf if it would look cute up on this wall or if i should switch so it is ironically the same shape as the window but i do like the window um Sorry, I'm having a moment of let me look and come back. All right, after that whole rigmarole, I've decided I like the two chairs here by this window, which I'll turn and show you, and then the couch across from it with the coffee table. I moved the little cabinet. I think I'll actually put the cabinet in the bathroom, but if I want to add this little shelving unit, and I'll turn so you can see it. So if I turn this wall so you can see it. If I add this shelving unit on the wall that can hold books and stuff, I think that's really sweet. But I think that cabinet was too much. So I'm going to hang this on the wall and come back. Just a second. Okay, so I've hung this little shelf there. I think what I might add next is these wooden dowels. And I think I'm going to put them on the outside of the wall like I discussed. How it works but I originally planned for that wall with a window to be on the back and then I was gonna put the cream in the center and then this wall but honestly the two blue walls and then the one sort of accent cream wall does not look bad in that configuration so like if something happens while you're building don't let it derail you just go with it so I have a window on the one side this awesome built-in bookcase on the other I've got a table and a coffee table two little armchairs and a little side table and that is like loving that construction so my next plan of thought is I am going to make some little cushions for the seats of these chairs and I am going to um, decide whether I want to stain them or not okay so I think I've come up with some things for the shelf I have these little squares um, that I'm going to glue together. I have a couple different sizes here um, and I'm going to glue them together and then I'm going to print off on my computer some covers for books and then I'm going to wrap the wood in the books and then put them on the shelves. I'm also going to glue the little house that off real quick. This one in here. Again, I sort of flatten it 
And then I like to put one sphere on top of the other. <laughs> Spancy, one sec. Okay, so I've put the two little pieces of clay together. And now I have these flowers left over. So I'm just gonna take my handy dandy wire cutters and I might need to cut that a little bit shorter. Hold on. Sometimes it's easier to work with something that's a little bit shorter. Let's put that in there. And I think I'm just gonna cut off another one that's like a smidge taller so that I can I'm also gonna cut down this piece here. Let's see. Can I make that go there just a little bit taller and maybe one more these again i know i'm a broken record but from the dollar store they're in their like flower crafting section i don't know i don't know what you call it but that's where they were okay that one is like too short okay i wanted it shorter just not quite that short apparently just didn't have enough Maybe I'll just cut right here. Hold on. There we go. Let's put that in the back. Oopsies. Oh, I know what my problem is. I am pushing where the flower is, not where the stem is. Okay. Okay. Let's reshape that. See? Now I have a little pot with some flowers. I don't feel like it's going to fit on my shelf, so I might just put it on the side table. I'll show you just a moment. Um, can you see it? Where is it? Hiding on us. Oh, there. See? Under the window. Okay. Just a moment. Okay, so I just made a little book. I just glued my little pieces together so it makes it book size. And then I just literally wrapped some paper and glued it. And now I can stick it on my bookshelf. I will put it up here. One second, I'll turn it so you can see. And now there's a little book. And if I just line up all the little books here, and I'm just going to fill up that shelf with different colored books and I'm gonna see how many other little wood scraps I can find to do that because that is a really easy book so let's keep going all right so I'm just gonna make a couple more books so I just put some hot glue on the side of the little wood that I already glued together and I've just cut the little paper on cardstock and then fold it over and I'm just gonna put a tiny bit more glue over here And then I'm just going to fold it over. And just like that, I've made a little book. So I have a green one here, sorry, and a little brown one. And I'm going to add them to the shelf in a minute. Okay, so this is how the bookshelf is looking. I've made a couple sets of books and put the little house in a little tiny camera at the top. I'll probably still make a few more things to put on different shelves, but I'm liking the progress. I also made a little book. Um, with a cute little cover for the, um, I might as well put it on the coffee table, that's cute. And then I have this little potted plant over here by the window. Um, so I'm loving how that room turned out. Um, I'm going to next make a kitchen, and that will be part two. And then I'm going to make a bathroom in part three, and make the bedroom for part four. So if you like this video, feel free to hit the like button and hit subscribe so you know when I make more content and come back for more. Thanks so much for watching.